Better System Trader, episode 33. Welcome to Better System Trader, the podcast to help systematic traders of all levels improve their trading. We'll give you loads of expert tips and practical advice on system design and validation, money management, trading psychology, and many other topics. Whether you're just starting out or a savvy systematic trader, we're here to help you improve your trading and find more success. This is Better System Trader with your host, Andrew Swanscott. Welcome to the Better System Trader podcast. This is episode 33, and I'm your host, Andrew Swanscott. This week's guest is Thomas Stridsman. Thomas has over 20 years' experience in the financial markets, was an editor for Futures Magazine, and published two books on trading system development and money management. He's now a fund manager at Alphacraft, specializing in short term trend following strategies with a focus on dynamic size allocation and risk distribution algorithms. In this episode, we talk all about strategy testing, why you need to normalize metrics, tips to creating robust strategies, and why he doesn't work on entries and exits anymore, and what he focuses on instead. So let's get to it. Hope you enjoy the chat with Thomas Stridsman. Hi Thomas, thanks for joining us today. Can we please start with a little bit of background on yourself? Well, hello, Andrew. Um, it's uh, good to be here with you. Uh, I started out trading systems about, well, maybe 25 years ago now, or actually I didn't start trading. I started uh, researching and eventually that led me to a position with Futures Magazine in Chicago as a systems trading expert and later as, as a, a systems developer for Rotella Capital in also in Chicago at and at the moment I am managing my own own found fund here in Sweden uh, Alpha Commodity Fund and I've been doing that for the last um, maybe five or six years. Okay, so how did you move from the research side into the trading side? Well, quite quite simply because of, of uh, from the beginning Rutella asked me to join the 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 research t- team. Before that, I was sort of strictly academic and strictly for writing uh, but uh, first Rotella asked me to join the the uh, real life uh, research team mm. and uh, after a couple of years doing that I felt I really wanted to put my own strategies to use firsthand so once I was back in Sweden I, I teamed up with with uh, a hedge fund here in Sweden and simply put my own stuff uh, to work. Mm. Okay, and what kind of trading approach are you using today? I am strictly breakout trend following, and within that particular area, I have also niched myself as strictly short-term trend following. And for me, short-term means uh, trading or holding periods of a trade for an average of about 10, 11 days. Okay, I think perhaps a longer term trend following approach is more common. So why did you choose short term trend following? Uh, well, for one, exactly for exactly for that reason, I wanted to find an area where where uh, I could make a difference. You know, there are a lot of long term trend followers out there. So I tried to first uh, niche myself where not too many people were active. But also, very importantly, uh, short-term trend following acts as a compromise for a strategy consisting of long-term trend following and other uh, uh, counter-trend type strategies. So uh, I decided to go strictly short-term, so not to have long-term trend following and to complement those with with uh, with uh, uh, contradictory or 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 other types of strategies. Mm, okay, so are there different characteristics when you're doing a short-term trend-following approach uh, compared to a long-term trend-following approach? Yeah, there 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 are. Um, uh, long-term, you have to for long-term trend-following, you have to give the the, the trades uh, more slack in the in the beginning of the trade um, you have to accept maybe larger uh, losers to uh, be able to reach the bigger uh, uh, winners 
Mm. So it's a different set of uh, uh, characteristics. I find myself rather uncorrelated or or very low correlated to to uh, many of the big trend followers out there. So um, you find your profits and losses in different areas of of of, uh, of the market. Mm. Okay, and what markets are you using the short term approaches in? Basically, all markets. I have I'm currently trending about uh, trading about. 30 markets and I have them subdivided into six uh, different sectors. So each sector have about five, six markets in them. It's everything from from uh, uh, bonds, currencies, equity indexes to commodities, uh, energies, metals. Okay, so just the futures markets? Yes. No, no stocks or um, Forex? Uh, nope. Uh, um, stocks only in terms of stock indexes. Mm, okay. All right. That's interesting. Thanks for uh, letting us know what your trading approach is these days. Now, I'd just like to move on to backtesting uh, a little bit because it's such an important factor in systematic trading. And um, you, you actually wrote a book called Trading Systems That Work, which covers the process of building and evaluating systems. Now, that book had a couple of interesting ideas and statements in them that I'd like to discuss with you today. So firstly, can I ask, what, what do you think are the most important measures in a backtest and why? Oh, wow. This was many years ago. Uh, 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 but the most important, it depends on where you are in the development process. If you are look at, looking at entry exit strategies only, I would say the profit factor is, is a very important aspect. Um, you need to divide your, your research into specific areas. Otherwise, you don't know what's affecting what and, and from where your profits and losses are, are actually coming. Who, who are, what are the factors that, that, that influence your profits and losses uh, the most? So when we're looking at entry exit strategies uh, uh, only, I say the most important fact, uh, uh, variable is the profit factor. Okay. Now, there was an important uh, concept in the book, which I think um, w when I read it, I th I was a bit guilty of, of doing that in my own backtesting, and that was using points in evaluating a backtesting results rather than percentages. And you, you put some good arguments forward for, for why that's an inaccurate approach. Can you explain why you think percentage is more accurate than points? Well, especially in the, in the, in the, uh, among the futures markets, uh, uh, each market is its own contract with, with a lot of rules and parameters is, uh, decided basically by the exchange, you know, uh, uh, contract size, uh, dollar value per, per uh, mean tick move, uh, margin requirements, and, and so on. So they really can't be compared one to one in terms of like trade one contract and, and one dollar uh, uh, made or lost. So if you're going to backtest a portfolio with several different markets, you, you need to um, somehow normalize your, your uh, uh, returns, your, your profits and losses. And, and, and uh, within that area, like uh, percentage is a, is a sort of a, natural way to do it you can do it other ways as well like like uh, log returns and so on but percentage is an, is an easy way to do it yeah okay and what about if you're just testing on one particular instrument over a, a long period of time what is the impact of using points when you're looking at these metrics as opposed to percentages well it could it could differ there as well because uh it all depends on on at what levels the, the market is 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 uh trading currently uh, normally uh whether the the market is trading at the low level in absolute price or at the high level in absolute price the percentage moves tend to be the same but uh the absolute uh dollar moves or point moves tend to uh, expand or contract with the level the market is trading. So at the low level, in absolute terms, um, the moves tend to be smaller in dollar terms, but larger in dollar terms when the market is, is trading higher. So if you want to make your, your uh, back testing 
sort of valid over the entire period you're, you're looking at, uh, again, you need to look at some kind of normalized uh, measure of return and uh, percentage come in as a, as a natural choice for that. Yes, I think a, a lot of people look at these um, absolute values like an average win in a, in a dollar amount and obviously depending on the price of the instrument, that average win could mean a lot or could mean very little. Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, thanks, Thomas, for explaining that. So I'd just like to go into another statement that you made in that book, which I thought was quite interesting. You said you should try to keep the maximum number of consecutive winners and losers as low as possible. Now, it may be, well, it's obvious why you would want to restrict the number of consecutive losers, but why would you want to restrict the number of consecutive winners too? Well, it's it's just the other side of... of uh of the coin it just it just follows if if i do have a lot of uh, losing trades in a row i do need a, a, a larger than 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 uh, expected amount of winners to to compensate that for that so uh, basically if you try to minimize the other you also need to minimize or if you minimize the first you need to minimize the other uh, but it's also more of a sort of philosophical aspect from uh, from the way I'm thinking. To me, it's important to always try to trade my average trade. I need to have an, I try to have an idea of what do my average trade looks like in terms of of, of uh, dollar risked uh, relative dollar losts or or dollar dollar won. So, uh, and as soon as I'm outside of that, the system is doing to me something that it wasn't really exactly uh, uh, expected to do. So, in, in, and it just follows in number of, of trades uh, won or lost that try to keep it as an av- to an average and try to keep it what seemingly look like uh, maybe random. I guess it may be logical to try and get as many consecutive winners as possible and as few losing trades, though. Well, let's say you let's say you know that that uh, over the long haul you will have say thirty percent winning trades, which is usually the case in in a long term trend following uh, or in a trend following system. Mm. So the other seventy percent will be losers. If you have a long term long stretch of winning trades. To compensate for that, sooner or later, you need you will have a long stretch of, of uh, losers. Mm. So try to, if you're trying to avoid one, you also need to, or it follows that you also should avoid uh, the other. This is if you want to go on for a long time. If you really want to make this as a business and just grind it out and do the same thing uh, uh, over and over again every day. Yeah. So in the book, you make a distinction between a good system and a profitable system saying uh, that a good working model is not the same as a profitable model. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, a good system should should capture the moves that, that you set out for it to, to capture. Uh, that's not to say that, that those moves have to be Profitable. It all depends then on on which market uh, markets you will attach that systems to to in the end. Mm. And also, uh, when you backtest and when you trade live, you will have good periods. You will have bad periods. You will lose at times, and you will win at times. So you just can't stop a system trading just because you are in the losing period because you know that will happen a system can still do exactly what you set out for it to do but actually lose money over over quite an extended time period that's just the life of 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 the trader and then you can always uh, debate how do you decide then when a system is going from being good to bad well that's an issue that's been debated in the industry for a long, long time, and I really, I really don't have a, a, a good answer for that. That has to come up to, to that has to be a decision for you, uh, partially based on, on, on your research for when your trades are no longer uh, uh, behaving 
uh, as that average trade or or that average trade plus minus some some slack that you set out for it to actually produce okay so um in the book you talk a lot about how to create a robust system so how do you actually define a, a robust system and what are some of the tips you have for ensuring that a system you create is uh, robust as possible well a robust system should work uh, on average equally well over several different markets and over several different uh, time periods and it also should work approximately equally well with slightly different parameter sets going into the model. I used to vary my parameter sets in, in, in sort of a random fashion with plus minus 25% from the parameter setting uh, uh, that I'm researching, that I'm, that I'm uh, probably intend to use, but I would like to see how it works with, with uh, uh, settings surrounding that. And also I do these tests sometimes even on markets that I'm not going to trade at all. And I make sure that I measure in normalized terms such as percentage returns and, and uh, profit factor. Okay, so you're talking about testing a range of parameters just to make sure that the values you've chosen are robust. Are there any other tips for creating a robust system? Well, in terms of, of, of uh, uh, research and tools you use, um, uh, I like to use the, 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 the heat map. That is those uh, um, uh, two-dimensional uh, color charts to look for, for uh, robust areas mm -hmm. where to narrow down your research. Uh, let's see what else can I think of. You need to think about how you consider your your costs, should you trade with or without costs. Uh, depends on where you are in the development process, but I say that for the most part, you should try to test uh, without costs, just to see how the market, how the system captures the actual move, and then you compensate for costs later in the development process. Mm. Because again, uh, costs affect uh, uh, different markets uh, differently. It all depends on what are the, 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 the uh, specifications uh, made by the exchange. Mm, but doesn't that give you an unrealistic uh, result when you're, um, when you're not including costs like slippage and commission? It does initially, in, initially mm. if you don't <laughs> consider that it, initially, if you doesn't consi don't, don't consider that later and uh, on in, in, uh, in the process. But uh, in terms of entry and exit, uh, uh, what you're interested in is to see how much of the move can the, the, uh, your strategy uh, capture and uh, you actually compensate for the uh, costs, slippage and commission later on in the process. Uh, make sure that the strategy is still profitable and, and profitable enough for taking the, the strategy uh, into real life trading. But in terms of capturing the entry and exit points and, and, uh, and uh, the moves, I normally test uh, or start out the testing process testing without costs. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thomas. Your first book was published uh, about 15 years ago now. How have your views on trading system development changed since then? Well, uh, actually, the uh, uh, again, if we subdivide it, the, the, the problem into uh, different areas, in terms of, of, of uh, entry-exit, uh, finding the, the breakout type strategy that should just uh, capture the moves, I have made things much simpler for me. Uh, I hardly spend any time on entry exit strategies, but accept that, that there are a few things that work. Actually, I manage a fund, but my entry exit strategies are the most simple strategies you can find. You can pick them up in any book or any article. Uh, that's not the difficulty with uh, with uh, being a trend following systems trader. Uh, the other area is is money management, and I have come to realize that uh, that uh, basically money management make all the difference. So uh, basically, that's where I put a lot of my research in, trying to to perfect my my uh, 
position size with with uh, uh, optimal f as a base underlying strategy that sort of lies underneath everything you don't have to trade optimal f that will be uh, 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 as it explained in, in Ralph Vince's book, that will produce crazy results. But optimal F with constraints or, or other type of, of uh, um, parameter of parameters affecting uh, position size uh, uh, will help performance a lot. Mm, okay, thanks for that. And so what about changes in the actual markets over, those, um, over that period? What, what have you noticed? Well, I basically trade uh, uh, the same markets as I always uh, have. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pragmatic. You know, it doesn't matter. At, at, at every point in time, traders or, or analysts will always say that, that uh, the, the volatility is crazy right now. We have never seen such volatility ever before. You know, but they always say that. And I try not... I try not to care. Uh, the markets are the markets and they behave as they behave, you know. And if you have a well-researched system that's supposed to work in the long term, you, you just have to roll with it. I'm, I'm, I'm very pragmatic uh, uh, when it comes to uh, these areas. But one aspect uh, uh, that, that could be said is the... Is the uh, uh, low interest rate uh, environment you you currently have, you know. So basically, as a as a trend follower trading uh, futures, you have nothing for free. A few years ago, you basically had a few uh, uh, percentage point uh, interest for free in 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 your trading because so much of your money is is still remaining remaining liquid in 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 T bills or or something like that, but. Today you don't have that. Everything, everything you make has to come from your actual trading returns. And so, are there any particular areas of trading that um, that you're interested in these days, or that you're working on? Um, yeah, yes and no. I'm going to stick to my guns and <laughs> stick to short-term trend following, or what I identify as as uh, as short-term trend following. Um, in terms of research and looking forward, looking into the future, uh, I will try to add um, some uh, very modern techniques like uh, machine learning uh, and so on. So I am trying to incorporate a few of, of, of these uh, prediction and forecasting techniques into my strategies. But again, they will probably not go into uh, uh, the entries and the exits. Rather, they will go into the money management algorithms. So you kind of already answered this a little bit, but what do you think the future of trading system development holds? Wow, another big question. Uh, another big question. I could <laughs> go on for, uh, about this for, for days maybe. But I, I do think that uh, uh, systems trading has become sort of rather popular in, in the academic world as well or among young, very bright uh, uh, programmers and, and uh, statisticians. So uh, uh, it has become much, much tougher to, to uh, remain competitive. Uh, the tools have also changed. I believe that, that, that uh, a few years ago, we had a lot of like um, retail type tools like Trader Studio or, or uh, Trade Station and so on that most people were using and me maybe even institutions were using. But in order to stay on top of things uh, um, and because of the academic influx into the industry, we see a lot of like, like uh, um, more raw programming tools like Python and R coming into the picture. You really need to be a good, uh, uh, a, a truly a good programmer these days, and uh, you need to stay top on what's happening then in the data uh, science world in terms of like uh, machine learning and neural networks and so on. These things are are finally uh, uh, coming into the markets now when the the computing power uh, is actually is there to handle these tools. 
And so from the future, let's go back to the past. Throughout your years of trading system uh, development, can you pinpoint um, a particular insight that really propelled your trading forward? Yes. Uh, uh, after having written my books, uh, I hadn't, have, hadn't really sort of internalized this knowledge at the time I was writing the books. It was just s- sort of there. But I finally, uh, now I realize the importance of money management. Um, so entry exit doesn't mean much to me any longer. I use the most simple uh, techniques and focus all my, my research on, on uh, money management. You know, I manage a rather small fund and I'm basically the, the only researcher for the, the uh, uh, commodity portion. Yet over the years I've been active in this fund, uh, 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 I am either outperforming or doing just as well as, as the major players such as, as uh, Winton or Lynx here in Sweden where I'm located. Uh, and I believe I'm doing that because uh, I have focused my, my research on the correct area, which is, again, money management. All right. Thanks a lot, Thomas. So I'd just like to start wrapping up now with a few quick closing questions. What's the best trading advice you've ever received? The best trading advice? <laughs> Take the loss. <laughs> <laughs> Take the loss. I, 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 I don't think anybody in particular told me that, but over the years, uh, having experienced uh, or look at other traders uh, or just from uh, my own in in uh, capability to do to to do this myself take the loss <laughs> that's a good bit of advice thanks thomas um so what do you think is the most important ingredient to become a successful trader you yourself uh, first of all you you need to have an analytical mindset you need to be a little bit crazy in that and very stubborn in that you you have this problem that you want to solve and you just can't let go. And this problem is understanding how the how the market works. So first of all, you need to be uh, a little bit crazy in in, in that regard uh, and uh, really waste your analytical mindset on on this this uh, really very very uh, uh, large, sometimes hopeless uh, endeavor. But also, you need to learn to sit on your hands. You need, uh, uh, not in terms of taking the stop loss. You need to do that. When it's time to do that, you take the stop loss. But you need to learn to uh, uh, let things uh, uh, take their course in terms of, of sticking to the system in good times and in bad times. That's why it's so important to have some kind of idea for yourself what is a good system and what is a profitable system. There, there is a difference and you need to uh, uh, trust yourself and the, the judgment you once made when you were developing the strategy uh, uh, and put it live you need to trust that judgment uh, uh, in life, real life trading going forward, sometimes many years later. So you need to keep that in mind at all times. Do you have any favorite trading books you can recommend? Um uh... To be honest, apart from your own, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did I just beat you there? <laughs> uh, um, currently, I don't read that that much uh, uh, trading books. Uh, can, How about uh, like an online resource or magazines or anything like that? I, I think Futures Magazine's uh, uh, website ha- has turned into something. Uh, um, really good, rather good and enjoyable to, to read a lot of articles for free. And I, I still like to follow uh, uh, Mare uh, Ruggiero and, and uh, his work. Uh, what else can I think of? Uh, uh, I like to follow Attain Futures uh, a blog. Uh, Trading View is a good website that I follow sometimes. Or, or go and, and uh, put up a quick chart uh, just to get some uh, some ideas. Yeah. 
Um, I think that basically covers it. Okay, great. And so what's the best way for listeners to get in touch with you? Uh, that would be over, over uh, email through my company website, which is uh, uh, alphacraft.se. And I spell alphacraft for you also here. It's A-L-F-A-K-R-A-F-T. Okay. I'll have a link for that up on the website anyway so that people sure. can find it easily. So um, so thanks so much for your time today, Thomas. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention before we wrap up today? You know, Andrew, I think you, you really covered it. We we discussed some some uh, rather d- difficult areas. <laughs> a lot of them a lot of them you really have to uh, try to grasp from from a uh, um, more or less uh, philosophical level, or mm-hmm. something that you sort of more intuitively have to understand, rather than 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 uh, factually understand. For example, um, good versus uh, profitable, and so on. So um, I think we really covered it. I think it was this was an interesting, uh, <laughs> actually rather rather philosophical, difficult interview. I liked it. Okay, well, great. Well, thanks a lot for spending time with us today, Thomas, and um, sharing your insights on in trading philosophy, etc. So, yeah, thanks again, and all the best. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks. Cheers. What a great chat with Thomas this week. Here are a few of my favorite takeaways. Something I'm sure many traders have been guilty of at times is looking at metrics in absolute terms. For example, uh, the average win as a dollar amount, which can mean different things depending on the actual level of the instrument, the time. So by normalizing values like percentages, we may get a more accurate picture. Now, we also often hear about the importance of money management, but Thomas went as far to say that Even though he runs a fund, he uses the most basic entries and exits that can even be found on the internet. He has an understanding of some basic things that work, and he doesn't spend time researching entries and exits. His focus is all on the money management. As he says, money management makes all the difference. If you'd like more info on this week's show, or just have a comment or question, head over to the show notes at bettersystemtrader.com slash 33. You can get all the details there. Anyway, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the chat with Thomas. Thanks for listening to Better System Trader. Catch you next week. Thanks for listening to the Better System Trader podcast. The next step is to head over to bettersystemtrader.com for more expert tips, practical advice, and exclusive content. Catch us next time for even more great ways to improve your trading here on Better System Trader. Better System Trader.